um, get, in, get into this thing uh, and operate. So the question is uh, in regards to music, I want you all, oh, here we go. Uh, one more thing. Tonight, as we are on this webinar, as we are sharing, we greet uh, all of those from uh, First Baptist Church, University Park. We greet all of those from New Calvary Baptist Church. We greet all of those who you are all on Facebook, just checking us out and feeling us out. Um, and so we hope this is beneficial to you. If you have questions, please, you can put them in the comment section uh, of the webinar, and we will try our best in this hour time to get to them and see if we can answer some questions. Hopefully we answer some questions along the way. Um, okay, so let's get to it. So here it is, uh, music. Uh, let me ask you a question. Um, when is the first time uh, where you fell in love? Where were you when you, when, you, when you heard I love you by that significant person for the first time? Where were you? What were you doing when you heard, well, don't tell all your business, but where were you? What was going on when you heard I love you for the first time to that person? Where were you and what was going on when you experienced that first breakup of that saint of said person? Uh, what were you doing when there was a place in your life, when there was a crossroads in your life where you decided to make a decision or you were inspired to make some kind of change or you said you were going to do something different with your life and in your experience? Um, where were you when you made a tough decision, when you made uh, a decision where you had to either go one way or the other? And you made that decision. I asked those questions because the reality is somewhere along the line, I am willing to bet, we are willing to bet that music played a part in that. That music played a part uh, in the first time you fell in love. That music played a part in the first time you broke up. That music played a part in the first time you made a life-altering decision. That music made a part in the first time you decided which way you were going to go or what life path you were going to choose. That somewhere along the line, there has been... Um, a soundtrack of your life that somewhere along the line music has been influential in those different places and where wherever you were um, the idea is that music played a part in that it's an intricate part of our lives we hear music everywhere and we hear it for several reasons we hear it in our television shows um if I said to you all, if I if I just started busting out singing, right, you take the good, you take the bad, you take them both, and there you have the facts of life, right, somewhere along the line, right, if I said, we are living, right, there's somewhere, it, it, it takes you back, right, it takes you back somewhere, you understand that music takes you back, we see it in commercials, right, commercials everywhere, you remember certain commercials and certain things because of its music, music is literally the thing that helps to create this particular soundtrack, music can I say something real quick? Can yeah. I say something real quick? Somebody else, when you ask those questions about where were you when you heard the love song for love song for the first time, somebody yeah. else that has been emblazoned in their mind as what that experience. So if somebody right now here is mind blowing decisions causes head on collisions, they know what that's gonna be, right? They know what it's gonna be. So I just yeah, that's that's yeah. it's it's all about it's all about understanding and recognizing where we are in, in and where the music placed us, right? That's because right. there's sometimes where the music placed us and put us in certain places in our minds and our heads, right? Um, that everybody everybody has a place. I don't care right. how old you are. I don't care how smart you think you are. I don't care where you are. Everybody's got a place where they go, oh, that's my song right there. That's just what it is. And so we uh, understand uh, that music is important influential and is significant and it is relevant in the journey uh music and memory go together music and memory mm -hmm. literally go together and music does several things and we're going to look at this music does a couple of things music inspires us music inspires us music moves us to challenge new things uh make efforts to change to keep us motivated um we we listen to music or some of us listen to music when we exercise um we listen to music in the church to be inspired or to be reminded uh that we can overcome that certain things can happen um i remember some of y'all are guilty y'all don't want to admit this but i remember when rocky three came out like and you whatever you heard that music when Rocky would train, right, right. Whenever that happened, you was up the next day. I was in somebody's gym. The next day you was working out. The next day you was trying to box. Right. That there's something that inspires. Music inspires us to do th different things and see things differently. Music informs us. Um, 
It informs us to let us know what's going on around us. It gives us information. Music gives us um, a sense of understanding the scope and the atmosphere that we might m miss otherwise, that we can retain more things with information uh, when we put them to music, right? Everybody, even now, if you're trying to think of a letter, right? Some of us go in our mind, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, right? We go through, the, through with the song, right? It is the song that helps us to remember because that's how we learn. It can inform us. It can give us instruction. Um, it, it, it also as it informs, it gives us that kind of instruction. It instructs us, that it gives us instructions to what we need to know in the world, to what's going on around us, that we learn things about people, about places, and that things through song. Um, we, were, we were listening to As by Stevie Wonder. Um, one of the songs that speaks to what it instructs is living just enough for the city, right? Like to listen to that, you know, a child is born in hard times, Mississippi, right? That we understand like through the story that's being told that it informs us about certain things. That's one of uh, the most intriguing things about the, the the suburban world when it comes to hip hop, right? Because hip hop tells, it, it gives it, what they perceive as this information wow. up to a whole nother world and a whole nother idea and perspective of looking. And music also invites, it invites us to paint pictures and to create new worlds and to create under, un, new things that we might not understand. Um, it creates new visions and helps us to learn, right? Um, I, I think one of the most prolific um, Vis, vis, visual songs is adore i mean like by prince i mean if you if you just read the words and hear the words that prince is presenting outside of the music which is beautiful the words create an atmosphere and a vision that you can actually picture it and indeed endears and brings you in um until the end of time until the I'll end be of time. there for you right <laughs> on my heart and my mind i truly adore you what if love want if 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 God one day struck me blind, struck me your blind. beauty I'd still see. Yes. Love's too weak to define just what Definitely. you mean to me. Are you serious? Right. Right, right. That, that is an invitation if ever there was one, That's right? Uh, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, the message, right? Yeah. That tells story, right? And so it gives us invitation into some places that that I think that you know, really feeds, you know, parts of our, parts of our being. And so music is a tool. It's a motivational tool. It's an inspirational tool. It's a restorative tool and music can be a revolutionary tool. And I think that's important as we talk and share about these over the next couple, uh, next couple of weeks, that it gives us an opportunity to understand that change is possible. Uh, music is all around us and it's helped us do all kinds of different things. And so Reg is going to expound a little bit on the purpose of music as we get more narrow as we talk about spiritual. So one of one of my favorite quotes uh, by my pastor, Dr. Jeremiah Wright, is this. He he did a whole series of sermons about, about music. And here's it was the first line, I believe, of the first sermon. It says, the songs of a people tell the story of a people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The songs of a people tell the story of a people. Dr. Small just went and talked about some of the things that music does. I, I remember being um, at my cousin's funeral, had to preach my cousin's funeral. And one of my other cousins came up and gave a tribute to him. And one of the things that she did was she listed the soundtrack of our lives together and used all the different music we used to listen to, right? And so it talked about that story and and, and she, you know, in a, in a marvelous way, kind of put the story with the song. The songs of a people tell the story of the people. And so as we consider all these different genres this month, um, if we begin even with the people of the book, right? Uh, the people of the Bible, they've left us a whole hymn book of songs that tell their story, right? Walter Brueggemann, um, I know it's Black History Month, but I'm going to use Walter Brueggemann just real quick. Walter Brueggemann, he talks about in the Psalms, there are Psalms of orientation, disorientation, and re reorientation, right? New orientation, I'm sorry. Orientation, disorientation, and reorientation. And so when we look at the Psalms of orientation, let's take Psalm 1. Blessed are, if you go King James, Blessed are the man, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the way of sin, and the storm scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law doth he meditate day and night. And so songs of orientation are psalms 
that express a settlement in regard to people's faith issues because God is known to be trustworthy, right? God, blessed are those who, who don't go in the path of sin. See, this, these are folks, and here in verse three, it says, they are like trees planted by streams of water. This is an orientation, right? Which yield fruit in their do, in its season and their leaves do not wither and all they do, they prosper. This is an orienting type of thing that settles us and molds us. So there's psalms of orientation like that. Then there are psalms of disorientation, what we would know is like the blues. We'll come back to that later on. Like a Psalm 137, these people who are taken from their homeland to another land ask the question in Psalm 137, how can we sing the Lord's song? in a strange land. Prior to that verse, they said, they asked the question, well, they say, our captors asked us for songs. They want us to dance and jig while we're under oppression. That they, they want us to tap dance and do all these things. And he said, how can we sing the Lord's song when we're in a strange land? Songs 10, asks a person, a, a person who is in distress, why, oh Lord, do you stand so far off? Is that a song to somebody on this line? Has some, Lord, where in the world are you? Or Jesus, Psalm 22, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? These psalms of disorientation talk about how we, how the, the how life has disoriented us, if you will, right? Then you have songs of, of new orientation. These are songs of, watch this, new life, just when new life had not even been expected, mm. right? These are psalms of new, new orientation. So one of those psalms will be Psalm 30, right? It says, I will extol you, O Lord, new revised. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. You have brought me up from the soul of Sheol, which is hell, restored me to life. There it is. From among those who go down into the pit, sing praises to the Lord, you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his name. Here it is. For his anger is for a moment. His favor is for a lifetime. Here's the one y'all all over. We all holler over. Weeping may linger or endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. This is a psalm of new orientation. This is from somebody who has been distressed. You wanted to holler right there, didn't you? Right? So, so, so the psalms of the psalms of people sang during that day and in our day and in our history tell the stories of orientation, disorientation, and new orientation. Or and if you want to look at it differently, it tells songs of suf saving, suffering, and even celebrations, right? And so um, as we look at as we look in these weeks at our particular music uh, with regard to African American music, we want to look at how these lessons and lyrics show us themes of liberation. All right. So what does that look like? Let me let me bring it a little closer and just deal with kind of um, kind of expounding on what Dr. Dr. Small shared early in terms of you know, what music is, what music does. Um, we share songs through story, right? We share stories through songs. Um, and, and the conditions of a people reveal the experiences of African-American life and even more an understanding of what God has done and is doing in this experience. That ain't just got to be gospel either, right? Mm -hmm. You can hear that. You can hear that through Stevie. You can hear that through PJ. You can hear that through hip hop, right? right. And so this is important, not only because of the lyrics, but because of the music itself. Here it is, watch this. Music, y'all, watch this. Music activates the brain mm -hmm. in a way where it starts with sound waves entering your ears, striking your eardrums, causing vibrations and electric signals. And these signals go by sensory nerves to the brain. And, and then they disperse and activate auditory hearing cortices and a whole lot of other places in the brain. And, and it's noteworthy that the different parts of the brain are activated depending on the type of music. So hip hop is gonna put you in a certain kind of way. Gospel is gonna put you in a certain kind of way. Jazz is gonna put you in a certain kind of way, right? You can be studying, right? And, and listen, and that'll help with your studying, right? Music can, watch this, music can alter brain structure and function both after an immediate and related exposure. And so the changes in brain circuitry brought on by music can literally give opportunities to promote healing in the body. Did y'all hear what I just said? Right. Music can promote healing in the body. And if we take it a step further, if we talk about not just music, but singing. So when you're singing in the shower and you can't even sing, right? Or you're singing in the shower and, and you think you can sing, or yeah, you can sing, right? It activates your brain in a couple of ways. Singing changes the brain by music, moving those musical vibrations through the endorphins released. And even when those endorphins are released from singing, they bring vibrations 
that cause physical alteration in the body. So music and singing can bring up physical alterations to you and also cause healing. Because if your brain is better, watch this, then you can be better, right? It can literally change a mood and an atmosphere and all that type of stuff. Like, so when you think about when you're singing Curtis Mayfield or James Brown or 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 Trayvon, all of these songs that in, in our in our history that also are a part of our movement music. That's a whole nother thing, right? Before folks went out to march, they had songs that we sang in the church, right? Then we had songs, we had movement music like like uh, Kendrick Lamar and and keep on putting all of these different things in terms of song, particularly in terms of liberation, but all of these different uh, ways that music and singing um, are a blessing to us is is kind of why we're coming at this because because it can assist us, particularly as we pull out these themes of, of liberation, it can assist us in understanding um, not only who we are, but also what we can do, especially if you go back to what Dr. Small shared in terms of music, inspiring, informing, educating, all of these different types of things. And so that's what we want to do in looking at these different genres and, 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 and begin to look at how music, our music in particular, with these themes of liberation and, and, and sharing are, are really blessings to our story um, and to our song. Right. The, the, let me just interject real quick and say that the, um, the 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 capture the the subtle shift we have we are trying to get people to understand as uh, is what we have shared before when we have been in in this setting is that the spiritual and the the secular in terms yes. of the African ideal is yes. not separate. That's right. right. Which is why you feel the way you feel when you hear Stevie Wonder as, or That's when right. you hear um, Ribbon in the Sky, right? Yeah. Or when you hear uh, People Get Ready, right? Yeah. When you hear those things and you feel a certain way, right? Um, that is because there is something in your spirit right that is speaking it is something in your spirit that is empowering that is transforming that is identifying and so it so when when we hear and when we engage it is not about separation simply because the term god is used or the name jesus is used or the holy spirit is spoken about but that we can actually gr grow and understand right that there are places of empowerment um, yes. that aren't that that just because they don't mention God, just because they don't mention God in a literal sense are not demonic. Right. right. And that is part of the problem or that is part of the challenge of the Western idea of of our understanding of our own story. So what we do is we demonize. Right. And we vilify. Right. Uh, certain things, because we have been told and conditioned a certain way that this is not of God, when there are certain things that are incredibly filled with the Holy Spirit. And we'll talk about that, you know, as we move forward, that there that that what does it mean to be inspired <laughs> by that spirit? Right. So Man, can, ahead, can, I, can I call my daddy right here? Reginald Williams saying he said music is spirit. Right. Right. Music is spirit. Right. Music is spirit. Right. Music so, is spirit. Yeah. So. Uh, as we talk about um, the spirituals, uh, let's understand the spiritual is a type of religious folk song. Let's go historical for a second. It's a type of religious folk song that is most closely associated uh, with the enslavement of African Americans or, or African people uh, in the, in, during the period of chattel slavery. Um, and so the Negro spiritual, we don't think about this, but it's true. The Negro spiritual is one of the largest and most significant forms of American folk song. Right, that because it, because and because it comes from a particular story and becomes because it comes from a certain place, right, of experience. Right. It has it has fed and it has led and it has directed um, the movement of a people and the understanding of a people. So the spirituals are historical uh, songs which speak about the rupture of black lives that right? James Cone says it teaches us about a people, about a land uh, of bondage and what they did to themselves to hold each other together and to fight back. Right. Um, Cone in his in his book, uh, there's a book called The Spirituals and the Blues, where Cone unpacks, you know, what it what the music has really meant and understood um, for the for 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 people. 
all right? Because of the African-American experience and the story that has happened, it has created a unique form of musical expression. And the form of musical expression, just like Dr. Williams said, has gone and extended to several different genres, right? So there are different, same, there's the same liberation, there's the same sense of empowerment, the same sense of wrestling with, with condition, but it happens in different gen genre through, through song. And so, so many of the spirituals we already know historically has taught us, many of them are code songs, right? We understand them to be code songs, the signal songs that were more than just melodies, right? Um, the genius, and, and Dr. Williams will, will expand on this, the genius of uh, the spiritual, the genius of the song is that um, it wasn't just pretty, right? But it also had meaning. Uh, it was also a part of the code switch to give indication, and it was communication of pain and, and plans and what needed to happen or instructions in one form or another. So I, I want to share, I want to share um, a brief two minute video that I want you to watch that kind of explains some of the function of some of the code songs that uh, were spirituals. And we'll talk later about how they've been uh, co-opted and colonized, but but you'll see uh, in this video. Uh, let me pull it up for you. All right. The words we're saying have a have a double meaning. So anytime you hear anything about traveling shoes or chariots or wheels somebody's getting ready to run and so you take a negro spiritual swing low sweet chariot coming for to carry me home swing low sweet chariot Coming for to carry me home. That chariot is movement. That chariot is swinging low, picking you up, putting you on that underground railroad, taking you somewhere to freedom. So when we sing those songs, it's like, mm-hmm, something's getting ready to happen. So I looked over Jordan and what did I see? Jordan, that was metaphor for the Ohio River. A band of angels coming after me. Those coming, those, those conductors coming to help you coming forth to carry me home. So they had all kind of little messages. And the slave master would hear us singing and say, oh, they, don't they sound pretty happy tonight? Next day, two or three people gone because we put that message out. We talked about wait in the water, wait in the water, children, wait, 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 wait in the water. Cause God's gonna trouble the water. So we stepped in that water because the dogs can't pick up your scent. We had all these songs that said it's time to move. It's time to go by the waterway. It's time to follow the North Star. It's time to start looking. It's time to start traveling. It's time to start getting ready to cross over that Jordan into freedom. Still away to Jesus. Oh, Lord, they're going on to heaven. No. <laughs> Still away home. I ain't got long to stay here. So we steal away to Jesus. We steal away to freedom. But it sounds like we're just talking about a, a life in the hereafter, but we're talking about a life in the here and now. Yeah. Man. So when we talk about spirituals and the cold songs, she explained in, a, in an amazing way kind of what we're talking about and what we're and what we're dealing with. Um, if if um, so Mark, you wanted to you wanted to go forward and talking about how does yeah. how does moves us? What we do with yeah. this? Yeah. I I I wanna I, I wanna say <laughs> that as we we saw that piece, as as we looked at that and wrestled with it, what came to mind for, to me um, and this, this may, I don't even know this is the right time to say this, but it feels like the right time to say this. Mm -hmm. Um, I, what occurred to me is that our spirituality was really not about, um, the thereafter. 
right? It, it, it really was not. Um, it really was about how to survive mm -hmm. in the now, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so the question for me is how did we transform from a, from a, from a theology and a ministry and mission of the now to it got so focused on well don't worry about it because your reward is in the by and by oh, right yeah. there's there's a there's a misstep that i think we uh, we we uh we engaged um in the development of the church to understand that uh to steal away and to wade in the water um uh, you know, is, is, it has, has such deeper, deeper meaning. And so it requires us, I think, to be very, very faithful and responsible to, you know, talking about, particularly in the African-American church tradition and context, particularly now, right? Wow, right? We could just talk about that for days. But how do we, how do we help people live now? now how do we help people live now? Right. And I don't, uh, you know, and, and you and I, we could, <laughs> we, could mm -hmm. we could talk about that for, for four hours, but I'm, I'm just, I'm just, just to really wrestle with that. How do we really return to a place that people understand the context of what's happening to, to live in the now? So the existent, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, cause, cause the theological thread kind of theological and sociological, right. In terms of how to live in the now, one of the things we do just, just as an example, Growing up, when it's time to clean up the house, what mom and daddy do? Put some music on. Put the music on all through the house. Help right. us get through to help us get through this now. Right. right? When you were working out, I've been working out, working out, and the song, the, the Alpha Walk song for, for uh, Beta New Chapter Alpha Alpha came on. I was tired as I don't know what. But when that dog on DOS effects come on, it helped me to go through a couple more minutes now. Right. right. And so that, that, right. So you got that. And then and then. How, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm with your question, Doc. How does, how, how do we shift? Um, and we may not see it, honestly. Right. It's been so ingrained and embedded in our churches, in our, in our thought processes, and what we have been trained to think, yeah. right? right. In, in, which in many ways is white Western evangelical stuff in black face, right? Right. We've been trained to think these ways, and it's gone over into our music. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because watch this, music is so, so important to African people, right? right? right. It's almost, it's the heartbeat, right? So how, what, what, what musicians we got to talk to? We got to talk to PJ and them, we got to talk to NDRE and them, we need some old, we need some old, yeah, what, what do we have to do to, I, I'm, with, I'm with you on that question, Doc. Yeah. Yeah. What do we do now? Yeah, it, it becomes, because that is, that is, to, to the segue, that is the existential question, right? That's the thing right. that we wrestle with. Where is God in the moment, right? right? Where is God in the moment? The question that is even more deliberate is how is God moving in the moment? In the moment. Right, how is God moving in the moment? Cause watch this, watch this. And it's important for us to, to acknowledge that in the moment piece, because here's what my therapist told me, anxiety is caused by either trying to control the past or the future, neither of which we can do. Right, right. What do we do in the now? Right. Stress comes from trying to control the past or the future, neither of which we can do. What do we do in our music and our theology and our walking to live in this thing now? Right, right. But you gotta be, but here's the, here's the part. You have to be honest with the now, right? You, be. Cannot, you cannot operate in this cognitive dissonance that it is not act, that it is not, that now is not happening. But now like, ain't you now. Can't be, you can't be devoid of the now. Okay. Right. Now ain't now. Right? right. Now is something else. Right? right. That you have to wrestle and engage with the fact that this is this is life to operate in this particular place. Right. right. So how does God speak? Right. How does God speak in the movement? Right. Does God speak in a code word? Does God speak in code switching? Does God speak in a warning? Does God speak in information that tells you which way to go? Right. It, it is it, that the, the, um, the theological imagination has to be bigger. Right. Mm -hmm. The theological imagination has to be bigger to literally see God in culture. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. literally see God in, in, in a broader sense. So it's not so narrow, but that, that I can see God, that God can speak to me when he, when God, when I hear steal away. Dude. Right. And, and I could be like, yo, you know what that means? That don't mean just wait to get to heaven. That means steal away now. Yep. Right. And right. Yep. That, that I don't, that, that wade in the water just ain't about baptism, right? But I understand that wade in the water means, yo, that means that, you know, I, let, let me let me, let me me throw the dogs off. You see right. what I'm saying? Right. So it speaks to how do I hear God, right? I, and, and being open to the imagination of God so that my liberation, my freedom, my, my advancement, my, my ability to thrive, it creates possibility and potential, yeah. right? I remember a story that... Um, Sam Proctor said real fast, Sam Proctor was talking the story. I don't know if you ever heard it, Reggie's talking about um, a, a, a young guy who had astigmatism, his eyes were crossed, mm. right? And he said that, um, you know, he was doing this lecture at the school and the little boy had his eyes crossed or whatever. And he said, he was talking to his friend. He said, man, we need to do something about that boy's eyes. He said, and they called doctors up to, to find doctors to volunteer their time. Right. And they found a doctor and they found an anesthesiologist. They found all these people to help uncross this boy's eyes. But the biggest issue was his mama. His mama said, if God wanted his eyes to be straight, he said he'd have been born with straight eyes. And Proctor had to tell him, he said, no, 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 you're looking at that wrong. If God wanted his eyes to stay crooked, he would have never taught a doctor to straighten them out. Right. The imagination right? It has to be the theological, where's the imagination to see God bigger than where you are, right? Yeah. And to say, and to be bold enough to say, God desires opportunity for me that I might not be able to realize otherwise, right? To have that kind of lens to navigate into those places, not to limit, but to open up possibility, right? And so that's what the spirituals did. That's which is what the spirituals that's did. What they did. That's how they that's how they did it. So yeah. the spirituals were contextual, right? Just like the Psalms. They told that's the right. story of wonder, they told story of resilience, they told stories of perseverance, what to do and what I need to do when God calls me in the moment and what the song tells us, right? Psalm 139, verses 7 through 12 says, Where can I go from your spirit? The imagination of God. Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you are there. If I make my depths, uh, make my bed in the depths, if I go to hell, you're there, right? That's verse Verse eight, verse nine says, if I rise on the wings of the dawn and if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light becomes night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day and for darkness is as light to you. We understand that this thing the theological interpretation, the understanding of what it is to broaden the imagination of where God is, right? Where God is, is broader than what we, what we think, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and how we do that. Uh, so no, um, no, no theological interpretation of the spiritual can be valid if it ignores the context, if it ignores the now. Right. It, if, if the spiritual does not engage in the now, it is empty. It's, yeah. an, it's, it's, it's an empty spiritual. Right. And watch this. Can I push it? Can I push it? To, Let's go. From two social yes, justice dudes, right. If yes, the worship, if the worship does not deal with the now, it is hollow and it is empty. It is uh, hollow. If it does not deal with what is happening in the moment, yeah. it is hollow and it is empty. Right. That is why so, so many people can go to church and then leave and still feel like they are empty. What did King say? King said any any religion that does not deal with the plight of what the people are dealing with and the predicaments of people is, is a dry as dust religion. Right. So Cole says that the theological interpretation of black spirituals is not valid if it ignores the cultural environment that it's created in, if it ignores the now, that I would argue that it holds true throughout the different genres of spectrum of African-American music all over, right? What Jeremiah Wright calls the 100 years war speaks to a tension that began mm -hmm. to take place between the hymn and the gospel of spiritual song, right? Um, so let me 
just 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 top this just, just share this real fast. A hymn by definition is a song used in Christian worship, and it is in a in an arranged form. Now I got some musicians, some musicians who are professors, so I need to get this right. Uh, at New Calvary, uh, Deacon Devon Scott Smith is on here. That being metrical and harmonizing tone and pitch stanzas are in hymns, right? They're formed so that they might be able to be sung by congregations, so that so or choir so that they might be able to be harmonized. And when we talk about harmonized, we talk about soprano, alto, baritone, you know, mezzo-baritones, you know, tenors and all that kind of stuff, right? So, so they, they give the opportunity, they're arranged so they can be sung in harmony. By definition, here it is, and we need to understand this as, as, as Black folk, as people of color, all hymns are not Negro spirituals, right? All hymns were not written by Black folk. All hymns were not written by people, um, you know, of, of African descent, but many Negro spirituals have been turned into arranged hymns. Okay, many, many of the spirit, many of the spirituals that we hear have been arranged to be hymns, right? And this was done, we need to understand this, this was done to normalize and to colonize the music and to make it more acceptable to Westerners. To me, that that's Europeans, white folks. It was it was arranged to make it more acceptable for for those who would listen to it, right? Um, those who oppressors who would listen to it, right? Not though here this and this is it. This is it. Those who would listen to it, not interpret it. Yep. Right. So it was it was made to sound more appealing to those who. Uh, would listen to it, but not interpret it. So it could be become more mainstream because I got news for y'all who, who are wrapped up in, you know, the study of music and the musicology that when you look at those German composers and you look at those, some of those German songs that are sung in HBCU choirs all over, they are folk songs. Yep. They're just arranged. They're yep. folk songs too. It's, it's not that they had some type of superior development. They were arranged folk songs from Europe, from Germany, from Russia, from different places. They were folk songs that were, you know, things that were, that were, were, were created. Like I use the illustration um, and some of y'all be able to understand this, that at lunchtime in high school, at Whitney Young and Elizabeth High School, Whitney Young in Chicago, Illinois, and Elizabeth High School in Elizabeth, New Jersey, it'd be somebody just beating on the table. And then all of a sudden, somebody would start kicking and rhyming. Somebody would start flowing. Somebody would start what, what we call spitting in terms of rhyming, right? And, and, and music would take place, right? That's how a spiritual would start. Somebody get a foot stomp, somebody get a clap, and music would begin to develop. Then somebody would start to sing. Words would be put together and something would happen. It wouldn't, it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't formulate, you know, in harmonizing, you know, hymn form. That's not how that happened. Right. So the arranged hymn, the hymn is arranged for some of the spiritual spirituals to colonize um, and to normalize or to, or to make normal for, for the Western culture. So uh, Red's got got something he want to share with us. So let me show just kind of an example of what of what Dr. Small is uh, is talking about. Um, let me pull the screen up. Many of us are familiar with uh, On January 18th, 1989. Uh, we're familiar with the hymn, the 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 arranged spiritual couldn't hear nobody pray, right? I'm gonna play a little bit of it. I'm gonna play just a little bit of it.
All right, many many of us have heard have heard that anthemically arranged kind of version of of uh, couldn't hear nobody pray. Uh, but there's another one. There's another version of that song. Um, I heard this about nine, ten years ago. That said, it's closer to probably some of the original language, original kind of way that it came out. And this is done by the Wiley Wiley College uh, a cappella choir. Listen to this. Talk about the difference between music being colonized and it being authentic. a wonderful statement he said don't only sound good it feels good feels good <laughs> and so going back to what we talked about earlier how it feels in the body like we don't disassociate from our body the same thing you were talking about no separation sacred and secular it's right. also right. what it does to our body how music affects the body right yeah. right and it, and, it, and, it, and it right and so and now we need we need to be open right we are not downplaying no. you know, the hymn. We're not, we're not downplaying the hymn. No. The musicologists and people who study music and all of that kind of thing. What we are talking about is the shift of changing and altering song for acceptance as opposed to its authenticity, right? right? That because let's be fair, Wiley College arranged couldn't hear nobody pray a little bit right, right? i mean it was arranged right? right but but the but the but the undergirthing theme is the same right that it's a foot stomper right it, that it's, it, that's right that it's that it's a foot stomper and what we found um in terms of the tension 
right? What, what Dr. Wright calls the Hundred Years War, because there were those who were moving to a place um, because of their Western indoctrination, who were beginning to shun their own heritage, their own culture, and their own authenticity. Right? They were beginning to think that it was somehow another savage, that it was somehow another shameful, that was somehow or another did not have worth in terms of articulating, sharing, and being a part of. And so the foot stomper, right, or the ring shout song, mm -hmm. or the song that was sung around the kettle, or the mm -hmm. song that was sung, here it is, the song that was the song that was sung in the church when you had the wood benches and you had the 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 wood fire stove in the center, and you did not have a piano or you did not have an organ, uh, those songs were somehow or another shifted and adjusted and to think that somehow they were ignorant because they weren't viewed as advanced. But what we've come to understand is that is why um, the voice is so significant for us, right? Mm -hmm. Because the voice was our only instrument. <laughs> right. So so when you hear what is looked at or by musicians as the lick. Right. Oh, and I don't do it well. But right. But you hear the lick. Right. You hear the, the variation and the vibrato in the voice. That's because there was no instrument. And so the voice became the instrument. The voice became the one to instill all of that. And so that's why when we hear it. Right. We, it, it speaks to a level of talent. Right. Which is why now we got people like Christina Aguilera and some other folk who who now appropriate. Right. I mean, that, that whole idea that something shoots through you because it, it does have its own gift. It does have its own ability. And so this this tension. Right. Uh, what were what you going to say? Yeah, because I was going to say, in addition to the voice, that was the instrument. We also had like fist heel. We right. also had the beat. Right. right. Because because of what you're gonna say in a minute, I know what you're gonna say in a minute. But it's 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 that go it's ahead, that go. it's no it's that drum it's that drum beat that which we communicated and 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 it's that drum beat that kind of really case in point. Whenever we get get all the chance to get back in church, right? And 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 um, choirs singing for blood and getting it right. Watch what happens when the choir director does just like this, right? And it's nothing but the beat. Right. It's the voice and the beat. Right. Because that's what we had. Right. right? Um, so, yeah, go ahead. So so the so the so the tension, the work. Right. People who um, began to be uh, influenced by the Episcopal Church, by the Methodist Church, by structural Southern Baptist churches, um, who are people of color, Absalom Jones, Richard Allen, Daniel Payne. Um, they begin to then pull away from or call, uh, like Dr. Williams said, call it fist and heel music. And there's a story that Dr. Wright shares about Dr. Daniel Payne, who uh, Bishop Daniel Payne, who was at, at a church and, uh, and the folks was fist and healing it and singing or whatever. And um, Bishop Payne said, we have to get rid of this fist and heel music. We got to get rid of this fist and heel music. And somebody said, Bishop Payne, without the beat, the spirit don't, don't come. come. <laughs> right. Without the beat, the spirit don't show up. Right. Without the without without the grounding, without the authenticity of it. Right. There is there is connection that can be lost. Um, and so um, we give, so it, it's not about its arrangement uh, and, and because the, for, for those, for those persons who were indoctrinated and influenced by Western worship, it was considered um, not because it wasn't arranged, it was not considered legitimate, it was not considered sophisticated, but those who sang the song sang from their souls to arrange it. And that song was sang, those songs are sung from the soul because the cry of the Lord was so deep. Right. Because the need to, to be connected to God was so significant. Right. To steal away to mean I'm going to run away all of the emotions that go with that. Right. That means I got to leave my family. That means I got to risk getting caught. That means I've got to run for miles and days and days. That means I got to hide. There's a lot. God, I need you in that moment. Right. I, I need you in that moment. So the hymns come from a place. The spirituals come from a place in the deep hush arbors of African experience where they were looking to God for answer. Um, so, um, you know, we need to we need to understand the origin of it 
because of its purpose and what it what it really needed to do. Like I think Harriet was was big with that. The movie Harriet, um, yeah. um, you know, and you know, and even uh, uh, Birth of a Nation, Nate Parker's work, Birth of a Nation, and they how they did, um, you know, the, the songs to understand. Want to go to heaven? Gonna show you how. Keep yeah. your hand on the gospel plow. Uh -huh. Keep your hand on the plow, oh Lord. Now, what now? What they did in the civil rights movement is they flipped that. I know the one thing we did right was the day we started we to fight. Keep your eyes mm -hmm. on the prize, right? Mm -hmm. So it still it still speaks, right? Um, my wife and I we laugh all the time about uh, the song and Harriet that um, Vondi Curtis Hall um, sang. Um, Time draw nigh, right? Uh, time draw nigh. It's time for the judgment. Yeah, it's time for the judgment. Yeah, it's sign of the judgment, right? That that all of these things talk about that they might be fisted heel, but they had power, right? Wow. They had power and they spoke and they resonated. And so our assignment um, is to is to grow and to develop and to evolve into a different kind of place. And so when we understand and talk about the spiritual, we talk about what it means to tell the story of a people to wrestle with what God ultimately has to say. Just like, just like the psalm, just like the psalmist write all through our biblical text that, that wrestle with where they are with God in the moment. Yeah, I, I think I think the only thing I would add, uh, Dr. Small, it really not add, is just really accentuate is um, the authenticity with which it comes from the soul is one of the things that that is a liberative type of uh, modality as well. Um, that that we sing this, you know, this comes from the gut, and right. you know, it, it 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 comes from as as um, as uh, Dr. Cohn said, you can't take a spiritual and not take the cultural, contextual experience of the people from which the spirituals come, um, and so, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we, 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 this, that's it, man. <laughs> you know, the spirituals and what they do. Um, uh, I didn't see any questions, doc. Did you see any questions? I didn't see none. I don't, I don't see none. Are there any on Facebook or yeah, Facebook any. on um, either of the pages? We, get, we, we got about four minutes so we can take, um, that, but what, what, uh, questions or comments, huh? questions or comments, questions, comments, right. Uh, to it all. Um, Next week, uh, there is a question. Um, right. Do we as people still have an authentic voice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's an authentic voice. I think there needs to be, and I'm talking from my perspective, I think there needs to be courage in how yeah. we articulate it. Um, but I think it is indeed authentic um, when we when we want to <laughs> when we want to tap into our authentic being. And here's the reality, and I'm saying this um, as a clinician now, I'm saying this as a therapist and somebody who does psychological work. The only way you can be whole is when you operate in places of authenticity. Mm. And if you don't operate in place of authenticity, it's going to be very, very hard to feel complete. And it's going to be very far to be affirmed by the God who loves you so much. The God who loves you so much and all the God who loves you so much wants you to do is be authentic. If you resist the idea of being authentic, um, it will it will limit possibility. One of our favorite sainted sages who is now in the land of the ancestors, Howard Thurman, puts it like this. He says, there is in every one of you the sound of the genuine in you. You can substitute genuine for authentic. There's in every one of you the sound of the genuine in you. And if you cannot hear it, watch this, you will spend your life on strings played by others. By others. <laughs> yes. Right. Yes. Yes. And then he says, and then he says, and if you hear it and essentially don't heed it, it is better that you had never been born in the first place. It never been born. It so either you're gonna be if you if you don't hear it, you're gonna be played. Yeah. If you hear it and don't heed it, right. you might as well have never been born in the first place. Yeah. He says, he says, there is so much, y'all look it up online. There is so many, um, um, so much stuff that is going through your mind that goes back generations before you was even born, where you got to find out what your name is. Yeah. <laughs> How, and, 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 and some of, Howard Thurman, yes. And some of what some of what he was, some of what our people were doing, even in spirituals, was finding out what our names were through spirituals as connected with the creator. Right. 
right? Sound of the junior. Do we have an authentic voice? Yes, we do. Calling my name. Hush. Nobody's calling my name. Yes. Sounds like who? Right. (laughs) Thunder. Yeah, man. Well, thank you, Pat. Thank you, pastors. These are the comments that have been added to both the chat and on Facebook are along the lines of great teaching. Looking forward to next week. Um, Very uh, thoughtful, outstanding Bible study. Um, My spirit has been touched. Um, And so I I think that folks are looking forward to next week. So do you want to remind everyone about next week? Yes, thank you. Thank you for the segue, uh, Dr. Owen. Um, um, That's our producers. Uh, our producers. Yes, yes, our producers are giving us the finger, um, the wrap-up finger. So, uh, right, right. Um, next week, we're going to do, next week, we're going to wrestle with this rhythm and blues, man. We're going to wrestle with R&B. R&B and blues. We're going to wrestle with R&B, R&B and blues and talk about uh, those, you know, those connections and those strings and talk about that. I think we need to umbrella that uh, with soul, too. We need to yeah. umbrella that. R&B, I mean, yeah, it's kind of R&B, soul, blues. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Looking at all those connections. Yeah, so we'll 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 talk about those, and um, you know, we, we will we will wrestle and open up those possibilities and talk about how how we deal with that um, in 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 our lives. So, uh, really, with the theme again of liberation, going through those liberation, we could do a whole lot with with all these different songs, right? We could do a whole lot, but this theme during this month is about is about the liberation piece, right? We could, yeah, yeah, we could we could do. Yeah, we could do Bible studies on a song forever. Um, but um, so 730, uh, we thank you ever so much for uh, rolling with us. Uh, 730 Eastern Standard Time um, and 630 Central Standard Time. We are praying for our brothers and sisters in the Chicagoland area because there is a snowstorm going on right now. Uh, so we are praying for them. Uh, eight to 10 inches, I'm told y'all gonna get. Um, and so y'all can leave that right there. Um, and just just PSAs, uh, Sunday, 10 a.m. virtual New Calvary Baptist Church family. You can share with us virtually. And for First Baptist Church University Park, 10.30 a.m. Central Standard Time, which is 11.30. So when you're done on the East Coast, y'all just come on, tune on in. Uh, 10.30 uh, Central Standard Time, uh, First Baptist Church of University Park, Facebook Live. Amen. Amen. We're grateful. Dr. Williams, uh, why don't you lead us out since we somebody else opened up? Why don't you close us out tonight? I opened us up. That's all right. God of our weary years and God of our silent tears. <laughs> God, who has brought these two churches and brought all of us together this evening, uh, even virtually, God, we thank you for this time. We thank you, God, for uh, the genius of the of our people who created spirituals, God, to tell a story, a story that uh, connects our people with our creator. God, we thank you for the lessons, the lyrics, and the liberating words that come from them. We pray now, God, that even as we go forth, that you would guide us, protect us, uh, particularly up here in the Midwest with these inches of snow. Uh, but God, we pray that you would bless us. Bless those uh, who even in snow, snowy times have no shelter. God, help us to be the answer to someone's prayer. Help us to be that which you called and created us to be, that we may live authentically, yes. that we may live the best that you called in the ways that you called us uh, to live. Be with us now as our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Sabobona. Peace to you. We will see y'all again. Be well. Be authentic and be. (laughs) Indeed. Indeed.